Um, we just hosted a fantastic webinar with Charlotte um, where she's given us some fantastic um, handy practical tips that we can apply um, to our day-to-day -day, um, working lives and careers um, to improve our health um, with better nutritional choices. So we're just going to run through some of the highlights of the presentation um, in this video for you, which would include an overview, um, where we go wrong, and some top tips. Um, so I'm just going to hand you over to Charlotte to say a quick um, hello. Hello there, my name's Charlotte. Um, as Amy just introduced me, I am from SR Nutrition. I am nutrition consultant and owner of SR Nutrition. Um, and yeah, I'm here today to talk to you about workplace nutrition and making changes at this time of year. Um, so the first thing that we covered um, is Charlotte gave us a nice overview of how nutrition can affect our health. Can you just give us some reminder points, please, Charlotte? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, Nutrition affects our health um, to quite an extent and often we read a lot of information in newspapers and in the media that, that contradicts itself. So um, I really wanted to speak today about actually the fact that nutrition affects our health in, to, to such a great extent because the energy and the nutrients that we eat day to day affect our ability, um, they affect our ability to be able to do day to day activities, but it also has an impact on our concentration, um, our memory, and also problem solving skills. Um, the foods we eat and uh, you know the context of what we eat them also help to boost our mental and physical stamina, improve our mood. But actually, something that we all know a little bit more about, it can help to reduce the risk of illness. So it reduces the risk of us having colds and flus, but also at the same time can reduce the risk of us becoming obese or getting diseases such as diabetes. Um, and just for example, for an organisation who is employing around about a thousand people. Obesity could be costing up to around £126,000 a year. And this could be due to a range of illnesses, so things like people being off for back pain, sleep apnea, um, and just general, um, be, generally being unwell. So that can have quite a big impact. And really importantly, this um, leads to more, all of, making improvements to all of these can lead to a more effective workforce. So eating healthily and getting the right foods can improve health of individuals but also for a whole workforce. Okay, great. Thanks, Charlotte. So um, where do you think um, most employees or professionals go wrong with their choices and their lifestyle? Well, one of the main um, faux pas that I would say is that often in the workplace people don't make time for breakfast. So it might be that they feel they don't have time or they have a, a small appetite in the morning, but most, for most of us we skip breakfast. Now we know that people who skip breakfast are more likely to be overweight um, and we know that for people who skip breakfast they're less likely to have concentration and have good energy levels to get them through the work day. So skipping breakfast is certainly one of those. The other thing that people often do, and it may depend on the work, the ethic of the company, but most people tend to work through lunch. They don't take time out, they don't have a break and they're not able to appreciate the food that they're eating. Generally, what we call it is mindless eating, where we're eating whilst doing something else. And it actually leads to us not acknowledging the calories and the energy that we've taken in, and therefore not feeling quite satisfied with food. This can lead to us having increased hunger and increased cravings throughout the day. Um, and generally, when we do have cravings, it's for those high fat, high sugar, very quick energy releasing foods. The other thing is that often people are working much longer hours these days, and this often results in people not wanting to take part in activity. So for people who've been working till 8, 9 o'clock, when they go home, they just don't want to go to a gym or, or take, you know, go for a run after work because they're just so exhausted. And, and eating healthily can obviously help to make improvements to your motivation and, and the amount of activity that you can take part in. Um, additionally as well, um, skipping breakfast and not really eating properly at lunch can result in us needing and craving an afternoon pick-me-up. Um, we often have a big energy slump at around about 3 o'clock where we feel fatigued, tired and just demotivated to do anything really. Um, and this is the result of all of the above, so skipping breakfast, not eating lunch, having food cravings and maybe snacking on the wrong things during the day and also generally not being active. And lastly, with a number of clients I see, I find that um, what they tend to do is they don't pay any attention really to what they're eating through the day. And when they get home, that their appetite really catches up on them and they tend to be grazing and snacking on high fat, high sugar foods, and all the foods they know they shouldn't be eating throughout the evening. And obviously, they often make up for the energy deficit and more by doing this. 
So what changes or what can we do, Charlotte, to, um, to help alleviate those um, negative points or those negative things that we're doing? So first of all, I would say um, these are my top tips, um, really, and, and obviously it depends on an individual, but first of all, I would say trying to make time in the morning for breakfast. Um, so a lot of people say they don't have any appetite, don't have any time in the morning, but actually trying to encourage yourself to wake up just 10 minutes early, or if possible, taking food in and having breakfast whilst you're at work. Um, even if you have a really low appetite, trying to eat something is better than eating nothing. Because in the morning, what we're really doing is breaking the fast from the night before. We need a good dose of energy and a good dose of nutrients to carry us through the morning to make sure that we have motivation and energy for concentration, that we're able to get on with our tasks as effectively and efficiently as possible. So do try and make time for breakfast. You will find it has a big difference on your, on your health throughout the day. The other thing I would say, um, and something actually that we got quite a few questions on, was around snacking. Um, it certainly is a good idea to try and have a mid-morning and a mid-afternoon snack. And the reason for this is because it simply can up, it can um, boost your nutrient and energy intake. So again, you know, looking back at that kind of mid-afternoon energy stuff that for most of us happens quite regularly. If we're able to top up on nutrients, just something small, mid-morning and mid-afternoon, in between those meal times, it means that we have another boost of energy for our brain. Um, and also improves concentration, is less likely for us to be demotivated and tired. Um, what we want to be doing, though, is trying to choose a healthy option. Opting for something like a bag of crisps is only going to have a small effect, and it's not going to do anything to improve our nutrient intake. What we want to do is choose something like oat cakes, um, dried fruit and nuts, which is full of protein, um, but also full of vitamins, minerals, nutrients, and fiber as well. You could also choose something like a piece of fruit, some yogurt, um, yogurt mixed with fruit, um, or crackers and cheese. These are all great snacks to have in between your meal times, um, and certainly nice and quick and easy, and will boost your energy as well as your nutrient intake. My next top tip was trying to prepare lunch at home. If we prepare lunch at home and we're able to take it in with us to work, it means that even if we're stressed, we're busy, um, we're tired, we're still able to make a healthier choice. If you've got food that you know you've prepared at home and you know exactly what's in it and it's a healthy option, um, it means that you don't have a choice but to eat that healthy food. Um, when we're often buying lunch out and about, it's very difficult to make choices, especially when we have time constraints, money constraints, um, and also aren't really sure what choices we should make. However, if you feel that preparing lunch at home just really isn't for you, then the best option I would suggest is to try and check labels to make healthier choices. Um, there are so many ways that you can check um, labels and just, just basically check the sugar, fat, salt, and calorie content of food, and just try and go with the healthier option. On my blog, I have a number of um, articles on there which talk about how to label read. So do check it out at www.srnutrition.com um, and go onto our blog page. The next tip is um, trying to take lunch out. So what we want to do is make sure that we get away from our computer screens, get away from our work environment. And even if you're able to just take out 10 minutes for lunch, um, go somewhere else, especially at this time of year when we've actually got some lovely sun coming out. We're not used to seeing sun, and it's great for us to be able to get outside, have a different environment, and take time to appreciate your lunch. So as I said, even for 10 minutes, or if, you can, if you're lucky enough to be able to go for a short walk at your lunch break as well, take that opportunity, because you'll find that it actually has a great impact on your motivation and your energy and concentration throughout the afternoon. Fitting exercise into our routine um, is also something that we encourage. It doesn't have to be going to the gym or going for an hour's run at the weekend, but actually making small steps to try and fit exercise in to your day-to-day -day routine. So it might be taking the stairs rather than the lift at work. It might be going up the steps instead of using the escalator. Or it might be something as simple as getting off the train a couple of stops earlier and having a longer walk into work. Or if you can, finding something like a gym or an exercise class that's around and nearby your work so you don't have to go home and get changed and get ready. You can go straight from work and then spend the rest of the evening doing what you like at home. The next thing is about our five-a-day message. Simply do try and get your five-a-day. There's a reason why we're promoting it, and it's for the energy, the nutrients, and the fiber that we get from these foods. I often encourage people to try and include a portion of fruit in breakfast 
So it might be a handful of dried fruit with your cereal. I encourage people to try and include something like a salad or some vegetables at lunchtime, and then some vegetables with your evening meal. That can really set you up to go some way to your five a day. And again, maybe trying to include some healthy snacks during the day, which include fruit or vegetables as well. So you really are well on your way to getting five a day. Lastly, hydrate yourself. Um, drinking the six to eight cups of water that is recommended um, certainly will help to improve your alertness, concentration at work. We know that actually those people who are dehydrated are much more tired and sluggish. So keep a bottle of water or a glass of water at your desk and just keep sitting on it throughout the day. You will find that this helps with productivity, it helps you feel better, and also will help you feel more energized. So do top up your hydration. So those are my top tips. Thanks, Charlotte. Um, I think you also had some really good uh, motivational ideas. If you could just rerun through those for us. Yeah, no problem. So um, in terms of all of the, that I said, all these top tips, it's very easy for me to say them, but actually motivating yourself is a completely different aspect. Um, as I said, the weather, better weather, longer days, warmer days can really help to inspire and motivate you. So use this time of year, and um, if you are in springtime, use this time of year to try and help motivate yourself. However, for some people, um, they have di di different things motivate different people, basically. So try and find out what it is that motivates you. Is it a holiday destination that you want to go to? Um, is it a size that you previously were and you want to get to now? Use photos, memos, um, and other things that can inspire you. And take them to work with you to remind yourself throughout the day that this is why you are doing it. This is why you want to make healthy changes. The other thing you can do is ask colleagues and friends to join you. Make it to a bit of a competition. How many sets have, have each of you done during the day? Who was able to walk to work? Who had a healthier lunch? Um, but get people involved, which might help to motivate and inspire you to make changes. Um, also, set yourself goals and, and break them down. Rather than just setting a big goal, say, for example, to lose weight, what we want you to be doing is um, setting goals and breaking them down into much smaller, more achievable and attainable goals. This helps to boost your motivation because every time you're able to tick off, even if it's just a small goal, it helps you to feel more motivated to get to the next one. Um, and if we're able to break our goals down into more realistic ones, it makes the bigger goal much, much more achievable. The other thing you can do is talk to your boss and colleagues and also try and get involved in workplace health schemes. So for example, cycle to work. Remember that good health benefits everybody. Fantastic, thank you. Um, and also just a reminder, if anyone would like any further information or some assistance from um, Charlotte or SR Nutrition, these are some of the things they cover. Um, workplace wellbeing days, one-to-one -one appointments with your um, staff um, and anyone in the business. Uh, nutrition consultations, um, consultations of the food environment and menu analysis, mini health checks, and also help with posters and leaflets um, and other collateral that you might want to display in the office. So if you want to get in touch with Charlotte, um, these are her contact details. And also you can follow her on Twitter at SR Nutrition. Um, we've also had quite a few questions come in, so I'm just going to run through a couple of those um, with you, Charlotte. So the first one that we had was, what healthy breakfast can you recommend that can be made easily when I arrive into the office if I haven't been able to eat at home? Yeah, very good question. There are plenty of options of things that you could try and take into work and have um, at work, if possible. So for example, there are some healthy option cereals that you could choose. Um, for example, something like uh, shredded wheat, wheat bix or porridge are great options if you're able to have them at work. Also, opting for something like plain yogurt with dried or fresh fruits and oats um, is another great option. Um, or you could go for toast and peanut butter if, again, you have the ability to be able to make that. Um, something else as well, maybe to spice it up a little bit, is something like bagel and cream cheese with some salmon if you're able to. These are all really good, easy, simple options to have. But ultimately, you just want to make sure that you are able to have breakfast in the morning. So even if it is something as small as um, a banana, or maybe a banana with a, a plain yogurt, um, it's better than having nothing. That's great, thank you. Um, do you have any tips for making healthy lunch choices when going out with um, clients or suppliers? Yeah, for, for many people who are working and, and having to have uh, lunches at work, um, there are so many ways you can make healthier choices. 
First of all, we're often given quite big portions, so trying to ask for smaller portions where possible, or even just ask to take food away with you, um, means that you don't have to feel like you need to finish your plate. Also, you can obviously make really healthy food choices. So, for example, swapping calorie-laden foods such as chips for salads. Um, you can also ask people whether they can are able to grill or use less oil in cooking, because often there are restaurants that allow you to make healthy choices. It's quite popular now for people to be able to choose healthier options when they're out and about and eating out. Um, also, ask the sources on site. So, rather than having um, salads that are calorie-laden with lots of sauces, ask to have them on the side. Um, and instead of having um, something like cheesy or fried food, maybe opt for a fish dish, which we know is going to be really important and will boost your omega-3 intake. Lastly, instead of if you're used to having a dessert, maybe you could try and skip dessert and order a coffee instead. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, would you ever recommend someone follows a low um, or carb, carbohydrate-free diet? Um, no, I wouldn't recommend carbohydrate-free. Um, carbohydrates are important for us, um, and glucose is actually the main source of energy for the brain. Um, the only time when it might be important to have a really low-carb diet is when you're oh, for an athlete who is carbohydrate-loading before a big event. But apart from that, it's all about the types of carbohydrates that we are choosing. What are the best types to choose? So what we would normally recommend is trying to choose whole grain, um, choosing whole grain varieties over something like white rice, white pasta, or white bread. And if we're able to choose whole grain, then they're more nutrients and more fiber. It's likely to just fill us up for longer. And um, so much, much better option. OK, thank you. Um, so someone else asked, I have a very hectic work life. Often I'm really busy with back-to-back -back meetings, and I have to skip, skip lunch. What would be a nutritious late lunch option to eat um, in this scenario? Um, that, it's quite a difficult question. I mean, generally we'll be saying try to avoid skipping lunch if at all possible. Um, definitely keep up, uh, keep topped up on energy and nutrients by having those in-between meal snacks. So, for example, if you are having a mid-morning snack, that can actually help to get you through. So if you are having a later lunch or um, if you have skipped lunch, it can help to make sure you top up your energy and nutrients anyway. So a handful of nuts and raisins, for example. But try and grab l lunch whenever possible um, and make um, a good choice by having lunch that's brought in from home so you're more able to fit it into your schedule as well. Okay, and I think we've got time just to cover off one more question. Um, I think this is an interesting one. What's your opinion on the ready-made salads from supermarkets or places like Prep and Eat? And should people be purchasing those or what should they look out for? Okay, so the salads are usually fine. It, it does depend on, on the, the types and the varieties that you're choosing, of course. But usually those kind of salads are fine. And it's best to have a look at the ingredients list. Um, have a look on there and see if there are any additives or any foods or, or things that are added that you're not really sure of. So, for example, you know, a simple salad with maybe some fish or some potatoes, it should really have the ingredients of fish, potatoes, um, uh, green leafy vegetables, for example. Um, if there's anything that you don't really recognize in there, then maybe you want to avoid it a little bit um, or just try and choose a healthier option with things that you do recognize. Um, also, what you could do with ready-made salads is when you opt for them, just try and make sure the sauces are on the side um, so that they're, you're, you're able to control how much you put on them. Um, salads can be a great choice, and there's often a really great variety available at the moment. So choose some, but just try and make healthier choices by checking the ingredients and um, being careful with how much dressing you use. Fantastic. Okay. Well, thank you, Charlotte. That's all I think we've got time for. You answered some really good questions. Um, if, again, if anyone wants to get in touch with Charlotte directly, um, you've got her contact details, so drop her an email and I'm sure she'll be uh, more than happy to get back to you and um, if you wanted to take her up on the offer of a consultation too. Thank you very much and goodbye.